Today I am installing a board and batten accent wall on this wall right behind me to add to our very moody nursery makeover. Now as you guys can see, this wall is just white, so I want to add something that's going to make it a lot more unique. I think board and batten accent walls are super popular with the DIY and home interior design communities right now because they can really take a plain and boring wall and give it a lot more depth and dimension. Currently I don't have any board and batten walls in my house, so I'm super excited to tackle this project. My name is Brittany from A Home Come True and let's get this wall installed together. The first thing you want to do is remove the trim from the wall. In order to remove the trim from the wall you'll need a pry bar and a hammer and the trim should come off pretty easily from the wall with these two tools. so you can go out and buy the adequate amount of materials. So for my wall, I will be using mostly one by threes and then I will be finishing the top ledge off with the one by two. This can kind of vary for you. It really depends on your preference for the width of the boards. I know some people use one by twos and also use one by fours. I'm using one by threes. I know that the one by fours are also a popular choice. I wanted to do a one by three to keep it as similar in width to the rest of my trim in the room. And the rest of the trim is three inches, so a one by three is gonna be two and a half inches, and I'm hoping that with the way that I install against the carpet that I can make them look very similar in width and seamless at the end of it. Once you have the materials on hand, you can go ahead and start cutting them down to size and getting them installed. After cutting the first piece and fitting it to the wall behind me, I've pretty much decided that the pieces of trim that were already here, the original trim on the walls, I don't like how on both sides they're running behind this piece of wood. It gives it a little gap here and it just doesn't give it a very seamless look. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take both of those pieces of trim off, recut the board so the board fits very snug on the back side of this wall and then I will reinstall the side pieces of trim. To finish installing this piece behind me and the rest of the board and wall, I will be using my air compressor and my pneumatic brad nailer. Now the brad nails that I'm using are an inch and a half long. If you don't have an air compressor or a brad nailer, you do have the option to use liquid nails to install the entire wall. But what I will say is, Liquid nails are a little bit more of a permanent solution. So if you ever decide to take the wall down, you may ruin your paint and even your drywall using liquid nails. So I will only be using my brad nailer and this will install and hold just fine. And then I will be finishing all of the seams off with caulking to give it that very seamless look. We have our first piece installed. Let's go ahead and move on to the vertical pieces. There are two things to keep in mind when installing these vertical pieces. The first is we wanna make sure that they are completely level and square. So they should be perpendicular to the pieces that are running for the bottom and the top for seamless installation. And then the second is we wanna make sure that they are equally spaced apart as close as possible. And you can figure this out with just doing some simple math in your space.
Installing those vertical pieces was super easy. We have two more pieces to install and then this wall is pretty much done other than caulking it all up for a seamless look and painting. To finish up this wall before we paint, we need to fill the holes and caulk the seams to give everything a very seamless and finished look. So to fill the holes, I'm going to be using Drydex spackling. I prefer spackling over wood filler. I just think it fills the holes better and it paints and stains better. It's also a lot easier to uh, sand, sand and finish. And I'm also just using my finger and I'm just getting a little bit of spackling on my finger, filling the hole completely and then any excess I'll wipe up with the wet paper towel. Most of this is pretty dry, so I have two sanding sponges here. I have a 120 grit and a 220 grit. I'm thinking that the 120 grit is probably gonna be plenty and I won't need the 220. 220 might be a little bit too light, but I brought it with me just in case. So I'm gonna start with the 120. And I'm gonna start sanding all of this down to get a nice smooth finish and then wipe it all down so there's no dust and then I'll paint. And these sanding sponges are super nice because you're able to easily hold it and it really doesn't take too much effort. I mean, I just did what, like 10 swipes very quickly. I mean, look how quickly that just comes off. Nice smooth finish. I'm just gonna vacuum up some of this dust and then I'll wipe it down with a wet rag and we should be good to start painting. For this wall, I have decided to go with Benjamin Moore's Sherwood Forest, which is this one right here. I am so undecided when it comes to these two. I like this one, the Oasis Blue, because I feel like it has better coverage. It's a little bit more dark and moody, but for some reason, I just have this gut feeling that this is the color. So I am just gonna paint this whole thing, Sherwood, Sherwood Forest. I'm gonna go for it. And if I decide that I absolutely hate it, well, at least it's just paint and I can always paint it again later. Hey, knock it off. What are you, what are you chewing on? Hey, knock it off. You're being bad. And that's a wrap for this Board and Batten DIY project. I hope you guys were able to see just how easy this project is. I highly suggest giving the Board and Batten wall a try in your home. If you have any wall that you just feel is lacking some uniqueness, lacking some depth and dimension, or even a pop of color. I mean, it's super, super easy and relatively cheap on materials as well. This wall is pretty much done and I absolutely love how it turned out. I know this is a really popular design in nurseries right now. And as you can see, that's what we're using it for. I just received Kennedy's personalized 
wooden name sign and I'm going to be hanging this up and I have kind of a unique plan for the rest of this wall so stay tuned for that. I will have a DIY posted this next week on my channel with the rest of the nursery and you can catch some of these things happening in my next Nest With Me video. Let me know what you guys think of the board and bad wall. Do you plan on trying this in your home as well? Also let me know what you guys think of the color that I chose for this wall specifically. Our nursery is super close to being complete, so stay tuned for my next Nest With Me video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope everyone is doing so very well out there. Goodbye. Ah! Oh my god! <laughs> you scared the out of me! Uh, you should add that in as a balloon. <laughs>